Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to open a pop-up form over the active control and then return a value to that control. So let's say you've got a field here like last name. You wanna click on that field, it opens up a little pop-up form. You can type in a value, hit set value and close, and then it returns it to that field. This little guy is going to appear right over the top of this one. If you got another one over here on the other side of the form, it'll open up over there. So we're going to learn how to position this form. And then we're going to learn how to return a value. Pretty cool stuff. Today's question comes from Sandra in Norfolk, Arkansas. She's one of my platinum members. She's also a moderator on the website. She also works on my handbooks for me. She does a lot. Sandra says, can you show how to open a modal pop-up form above a specific control? I'm trying to use your pop-up calendar date picker, and it would be nice if it opened on top of the date field. And here's the example she posted in the forums. If you got a date field over here, you want to click on it, and it pops up the date picker, right? This is a little date picker that I built. And you can pick the date, and then it returns it back there. But if you want to click on this guy over here, you kind of want this date picker form to appear like over here. Right? You want to position this, this pop-up form. Okay? That's what we're going to be doing today. Now, before we get started, if you don't know what modal and pop-up forms are, go watch this video first. I personally don't like pop-up forms. All right? And in a nutshell, the difference is a modal form is something that opens that you have to either close it or do something with it before you can act on the stuff behind it. Right? So if you're little calendar form here pops up and it's modal, you won't be able to click behind it. That's what modal means. It's you're stuck on this guy until you close it, okay? Now, pop-up is different. Pop-up is a form that just stays on top of other forms. So you can still work with the stuff behind it. That's good for like a little notepad here, which is the example that I build in this video. I personally don't like pop-up forms. I rarely use them because in a multi-monitor solution or setup like I have, yeah, it's a, you have a hard time controlling where that guy goes. So even though I'm using the word pop-up, I'm not using a pop-up form for this example. It's only modal, okay? I just use the word pop-up in the title of the video because I know that's what everyone thinks of that form as. Not many people know what the, the word modal means, so I'm not, I didn't put it in the title. All right, but we're going to be using a modal form, which is kind of pop-up. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be pop-up because you're going to open it and it's going to pop up on top of the other form and you can't get behind it until you close it so it's basically is pop-up but pop-up forms also work outside the boundaries of the microsoft access application window you can move them anywhere you want which is a pro and a con the con is that you really can't have a hard time controlling where they go because their xy coordinates are your entire screen whereas a modal form if it's just modal it will stay inside the access application window and i actually prefer that but again there's applications for both so Whichever one you use, I'm using a modal form, a modal non-pop-up form. All right, now this is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, that means if you don't know VBA and you want to learn it, go watch this first. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. Make sure you watch my do command open form video so you understand how this command works. Watch my move size video so you understand how to move a form where you want it to the XY coordinates that you pick, right? We'll talk about window left, window right, and stuff like that in this video as well. Very important. Or not window left, it's window top. It's window top, left, height, and width. This is actually wrong right here. <laughs> We're gonna need to use active control to determine where to return that value to. In fact, this video does kind of show you how to do the same thing, right? Pick a date, put it back here. But this video doesn't show you how to position this window, and that's what we're going to be doing today. And, of course, we have to know what form we're on, so go watch my active form video. And we'll be using Adam's favorite tempvars command, so go watch this as well. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those and then come on back. All right, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And let's say here on my customer form, I got a couple fields that I want to be able to click on. It'll open up that pop-up window. You type in a value, do whatever you want, pick a date, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then it returns it here. But you want to position that over this guy. And if I click on down here in the credit limit, I want to position it over there. Okay? 
Well, first we need a little form to pop up. So let's take my single form over here. I'm gonna copy and paste that, and we'll call this my modal F. It'll be a modal form. All right, modal F, design view. All right, let's say I just wanna keep one text box in here, and we'll call that guy return value. And I'll put a default value of Picard in there. We're going to return Picard or whatever the user types in. And then we'll have a big button. I'll put a command button right here, which will cancel the wizard. And we'll say uh, close form and return value. And we'll get the coding this guy later. All right, so that's just our pop-up form for now, our modal form. So let's go to the forms properties, go to other. I'm gonna turn modal on and leave pop-up no. All right, that way we can position it inside the access window where we want. And you can turn off things like the, uh, the scroll bars you don't need. You don't need the, um, where are they? The record selectors and navigation buttons, all that stuff. All right, save it, close it, close it if you open it. That's what you're going to get, this little guy. And, of course, it's modal, so when you use a modal window, and I can't grab the... That's one of the problems. Let's turn the max and min buttons off, too, because then you can't get a hold of the title bar. Right-click, design view. Where's those max and min buttons? Right there. We don't need those either. Because sometimes when you open up a modal form, you, it makes it hard to grab the title bar if you got max and min buttons there, too. So this guy's just going to pop up. You're going to type in your value. You're going to hit this button, and it's going to close the form and put it back here the value back here and if you open it up over here it's going to open up over on this side okay okay now we got to write the code to actually do that so for the purposes of class i am going to i'm going to delete these guys and i'm going to slide country way over here it'll be the, those will be the two fields we we'll use just so you can see that it's working on opposite sides of the form okay okay and i'm going to visually change these two guys to let's make them like a deep blue here let's go like that all right, those are the fields we're going to know. That tells the user, hey, you can click on these and something's going to happen, right? I usually make them blue. You can do whatever you want. Now, it'd be easy to hard code it to each one of these controls, right? You could say, okay, first name. If it's here, then open up that form and move it to XY. If it's over here, open it over this. But we want to make a reusable function, right? Something we can use regardless of what control is clicked on. All we have to do is say, okay, call it from country, call it from first name, and it'll just work. You don't have to keep specifying different parameters. All right, so let's just go into one of these guys, this first name here. I'm gonna go to events and go to on click and hit the dot, dot, dot button. All right, that'll bring up the code builder. Let me resize, we don't need this right now. Okay, all right, so in the first name click, we're gonna say pop up over control, that's it. Okay, now we're going to write that pop-up over control. I'm going to go to the bottom here. All right, for now, we'll keep it private. Sub pop-up over control. Okay, we're going to need some variables. We're going to need to know what the active form and the active control are. I like to get those and throw them in local variables. It just makes things easier because then you don't got to always reference screen dot active control later. You just say active control. So we're going to dim active control CTL as a control and active form frm as a form and those are really easy to set we're going to set their object variables so you got to set them all right so set active ctl equals screen dot active control same thing with the form set active form equals screen dot active form and remember my rule, when you set them, you gotta forget them. So later on at the bottom, we gotta make sure we set active control equals nothing. Active control equals nothing. I can't type today, people. And set active form equals nothing. That clears that memory, okay? Now we're gonna need to figure out X and Y coordinates for where that control is. All right, now the form has a property called window left and window top. That's the left and top coordinates, basically the X, Y coordinates of the upper left corner. And to that, we can add the coordinates of the active controls left and top properties. All right, then we know where we gotta move the pop-up window to. So we'll need two more variables, dim X as a long and Y as a long. And we can set those right here. X 
equals active form dot window left plus active control dot left. It's just left. And yes, it's not in the IntelliSense. Why I don't know access team, but it's it's real. Okay, and then the same thing for y equals active form dot window top plus active control dot top. Again, not in there. You don't want top padding. I don't know what's going on with the IntelliSense people. All right, let's see what we got so far. So here we're just going to message box X and a space and a Y. Let's see what those coordinates look like. Okay, and we need to put pop up over control in the other field. So come over here. Click on this guy, click on that guy, click on this guy, and do the same thing there. Pop up over control. We'll just copy and paste. See, now we can put pop up over control in any click event we want, and it's just going to call this. It doesn't matter what, what field it is. All right, save it, debug compile once in a while. All right, close it, open it, click it. All right, that's 2670 by 1035, so it's 2670 this way. By 1035 that way. All right, hit OK. And what's this guy? All right, 7350 by 3195. That, that seems reasonable. OK. So now all we have to do is open up the form and move size it to that spot. So let's come back to our code. We don't need the message box anymore. We're going to say do command dot open form, whatever our modal form is, modal F, and then do command dot move size x comma y you could change the height and width here you don't have to okay and that for now is going to be it save that and then watch ready boom and it opens right there and if i close it and open it over here boom it opens right there see it's opening up and moving it to where that control is it's not exact but it's well actually this little corner right here i think is what it's lining up with so close enough for government work though right okay now we just have to return that value, right? When the user opens it up, puts something in here, hits the button, and then returns it back here. Actually, what we could do is, instead of that default value of Picard always being in the box, why don't we send to that form what's, in the, what's currently in the box, right? After we open it, let's say forms modal F return value equals active control dot value. Right? So now when we open up that box, it puts whatever's in there in there. Then you can make a change to it if you want, right? Boom, see, USA. Okay. So the next step now is just to return whatever they, if they change this to Canada, for example, we want to hit close form and return and it'll bring it back and put it in there. We'll cover that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because I'm going to keep recording right now and I'm going to post it. And that's one of the benefits of being a member is you can watch the videos as soon as I finish them. You don't got to wait for them to go public. But tomorrow I'm going to show you how to return that value to the calling control. And we're going to discuss what happens if you've got a subform. But that's going to do it for today, folks. That's your tech help video. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level.
Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.